Now, how about something about the Digital Archive of Literacy Narratives? The DALN is the largest publicly online, oh, let's try that again. <laughs> now, how about something about the Digital Archive of Literacy Narratives? The DALN is the largest publicly available online archive of firsthand accounts about reading or composing in the world as far as we know. The DALN invites people of all ages, races, communities, backgrounds, and interests to contribute stories about how and under what circumstances they learned how to read, write, and compose meaning and how they continue to do so and how they helped others learn to do so. The DALN welcomes personal narratives about reading and composing all kinds of texts, both formal and informal, diaries, blogs, poetry, music, and musical lyrics, fanzines, school papers, videos, sermons, gaming profiles, speeches, chat room exchanges, text messages, letters, stories, and photographs, etc. We also invite contributors to supplement their narratives with samples of their own writing with their own papers, with letters they've written, with zines or speeches they've produced, and their own compositions, their musical compositions, or photographs, videos, or sound recordings, etc. How about some history of the DALN? The DALN went live in its online context in 2007. I arrived at Ohio State in 2005, having previously conducted oral history interviews focused on literacy practices and values, and having written extensively about personal literacy narratives. My idea was to create a unique archive of personal literacy stories. It was to be unlike previous projects in which researchers had collected literacy narratives primarily to conduct and publish research on these narratives. The original narratives, the original stories that researchers used, remained in their own files. But the archive that I wanted to start um, would be online. It would be multi-format, text, audio, and video. It would be preserved for the long term by an institutional host, and importantly, it would be publicly available to multiple audiences for multiple purposes, including but not limited to research. At a time when literacy practices and values are changing in response to new digital modes of composition and communication, we hope that the digital archive of literacy narratives, as the archive came to be called, would create an invaluable historical records during a period of rapid change. I joined with my colleague, Professor H. Lewis Ullman, to write the Institutional Review Board application, the IRB application, for the DALN in 2005. Both of us realized that the DALN would require a big humanities model, similar to big science projects. It would have to attract external funding, which would require wide collaboration by people with very different skill sets and would require extensive institutional infrastructure and the collaboration of several university partners. Here's an excerpt from the original proposal for the project, which took the form of a personal invitation to potential collaborators. To design and create a national digital archive of literacy narratives, a large-scale digital corpus of literacy interviews and artifacts in multiple formats, print, video, and audio, that trace the digital literacy practices and values of U.S. citizens, and that is open to scholars from around the world. The first large-scale repository of its kind, this archive would provide researchers from a range of disciplines a site for studying the changing nature of U.S. literacy practices in the 21st century. Scholars could use the archive as a site for identifying and studying emerging literacy trends and tracing literacy practices and values historically. Educators could use the archive as a site for shaping increasingly effective instruction at all levels. Now, in this initial articulation, some of the features that continue to characterize the DALN today are evident. 
an open archive that is freely available worldwide via the internet, consisting of individuals' literacy narratives, at first we describe these as interviews, and artifacts in multiple digital formats. Further, the idea of big humanities as articulated in this early planning document continues to inform the DALN. As we said, in this sense, the archive represents a unique and valuable kind of big humanities project, one that resembles big science projects like the Genome Project in its overall scope, but that also recognizes the value of individuals and their stories by focusing on information contained within individual literacy interviews. The project will also allow scholars to focus on specialized groups of interviews for further study. Disabled workers, women scientists, Native American teens, black engineering students, computer using seniors, first generation college students, etc. Some aspects of the project changed significantly over time. For example, early documentation for the DALN focuses on researchers and educators, building on their interests to gather information about U.S. literacy practices in the 21st century. And while researchers and educators continue to play key roles in the development of the DALN and represent an important audience, various factors we discuss in the following items, ooh, maybe I gotta start that again. Okay. What's gonna be below? That's what I uh, wonder. And who knows? Okay, in the following sections, I guess I can say. In the following lessons. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right there, some aspects. Okay. Some aspects of the DALN project change significantly over time. For example, early documentation for the Digital Archive of Literacy Narratives focused on researchers and educators, building on their interests and efforts to gather information about U.S. literacy practices in the 21st century. While researchers and educators continue to play key roles in the development of the DALN and represent an important audience, various factors we discuss in the following sections shifted the focus of planning from researchers gathering information for study to individuals contributing personal literacy narratives for their own reasons and in their own words. Okay. 